Um, we're going to be um, going through everything that you need to know, everything that needs to be undertaken before you take a project to market. Um, we'll also take a look at the calendar year of festivals, which to attend. I mean, these days, of course, it's online, uh, but it'll give you a little bit of insight if you don't know them all. This is what we call the Media, Entertainment and Technology Universe. This is a little bit uh, fuzzy, it's not very clear, but that's uh, something that will be fine in the, in the PDF presentation. You can see the net worth, basically, of, of all the different groups and how they've how they've evolved and then moving on to evolving technology and seeing how fast things are moving. This is basically just to portray how technolo technology has evolved from analog to digital over decades and then from digital to connected and now to virtual in just a matter of years. So nowadays the competition is not just other TV, it's everything. Um, these are mind blowing figures. I don't know if you've seen these infographics on exactly what happens in an internet minute. It's just the plethora of devices that are available today. So what are the knock-on effects of the tech evolution? Uh, we're going to take a peek at the kids, uh, key kids platforms, um, what kids are watching, how they're consuming content, and what they like to watch in terms of genre. So we have a huge multiplication of kids platforms. Um, here are just a few. Through this tech revolution, we'll see emerging enterprises. I've put Wellbrain in here because, well, you'll associate them, as you probably know, that they were um, acquired by DHX Media, which has now rebranded into Wellbrain. But Wellbrain was originally um, a content uh, aggregator for YouTube. And other enterprises that we've seen emergency recently are um, B2C, business to consumer apps. So cutting out the middleman, going direct to consumers, the surge of innovation and the plethora of viewing devices and tech. Um, competition is fierce in terms of content and platforms and audience ratings are scattered into thousands of tiny pieces. There's been total segmentation of the marketplace. There's been a total explosion of content produced for and consumed by kids on mobile devices. So basically just to say that Animation is a wonderful business to be in. There's lots of opportunities. So I focused mainly on TV, apps, and a little less on features. I do have a lot of statistics on, on features, on theatrical release. It's really good to know what kids are watching. Um, the trends I wanted to share with you are very, it's a very broad overview. Right? It's uh, basically animation, viewing, favorite shows, brands, and favorite genres. Um, emotional scheduling is about basically how kids are consuming content on a typical day. So it's, it's really about identifying patterns of what device a child is likely to choose at any particular time of day, where they're likely to be using it, and whether they're likely to be alone or with others. This is to give you an idea of how the different platforms are ranking worldwide and what kids prefer to watch. This is a stat from the UK, to see for 12 to 15 year olds. This is quite a broad range, again from the UK, uh, three to 12 year olds, the types of video that they like. Uh, favorite shows, the use of streaming services and technology is high with children under the age of nine, um, uh, but watching traditional TV is just as popular. So the kids were asked all over the world, what, what was their favorite brand? Uh, what's interesting from this is sometimes there's been actual shows or brands, um, but sometimes there are actual broadcasters or platforms. Favorite movies, uh, these are applied to most countries. It depends on your releases and your territory. So it'll be interesting to see the progression over, over the next year. And we have them. Favorite apps, basically YouTube. So you see how things evolve through age, different age groups, of course. Content. So preferred entertainment genres, another huge range of ages. Now, humour is so, so important um, that I looked at different types of humour. Uh, this is for six to ten, six to ten year olds, generally. Um, what exactly is making them laugh? So kids still have superheroes, of course, but superheroes are flawed. And um, authenticity is going to take over the perfect image more and more. So kids' favourite characters, that just gives you a broad rundown. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, traditional TV is still the home of favourite brands and shows, and family viewing is important. Um, and kids just love flawed characters that they can relate to themselves. So we're going to look at um, some trends. Um, and I think it's kind of essential when you're prepping your own pitches to understand different trends in the marketplace. So funding, content funding. Um, uh, check out evolving schemes in your home territory. So what's available to you through your government. You, I think you've got quite a lot of assistance in Malaysia, from what I understand. Um, broadcasters are going more and more to where, to talking about catering to kids, they're going more and more to where the kids are. Bridging shows, uh, another major trend. And um, comedy rules, absolutely rules, always. So the themes in vogue have now actually become essential components, diversity. These are governmental guidelines, anti-bullying campaigns, uh, healthy eating, environmental issues, brands that can provide children with the opportunity to co-create and more likely to develop a more sustained and loyal relationship with them over generations. 
esports, broad character, voice technology, etc. So kids are no longer just passive consumers of content or products instead of simply consuming. They want to co-create, learn, build, even code their own creations. Um, kid activism um, has been a big trend since since oh, probably about 18 months now, maybe more. Future trend predictions, um, the never ending story I was talking about earlier, the new dimension to reading experiences, voice activation. Yeah, actually, this is very, very apparent with kids, younger kids. So microsystems, this generally applies to boys. Okay, and this is something I know very little about, uh, the evolution of esports. Absolutely fascinating, though. Um, there's a huge, huge amount of money, as you know, in, in esports. Tween safe content is, is something that's a, uh, it's a big question and um, platforms and, and, and finding animation or even live action that's appropriate for tweens that actually want to watch is is tricky. Global players, it's about money, where you can find money and funding investment. Uh, the GAFAN, of course, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple and Netflix and the new streaming platforms. Avil platforms, have a look at YouTube Kids and Kadoodle and the networks. I call them the networks. It's Disney, Nickelodeon, Turner, the traditionals. So I have a few stats and very recent stats, actually, on the world's most popular streaming services. Netflix, uh, since 2015, it's interesting to see the split between the USA and international figures, uh, 2019. You see the huge peak in Q2 this year. The streamers are spending a fortune on content. I'm talking to Quibi, this stat is actually from Quibi, and I think it's very interesting to see, and from the point of view as a consumer, because we're all consumers, and exactly how much these services cost in the States and, and how much consumers are willing to spend on, on subscriptions and subscribers based um, platforms. Netflix is always perceived as the, as the mecca by a lot of producers as a way of, of, of making uh, cash, potentially an original. Here is a slide on short form. That's a little bit, it's interesting progression over the years. YouTube, the Avon juggernaut. This is the, the, the super highway in terms of content, um, user generated or actually um, curated. They do have, they do curate content through YouTube Kids. So in terms of Avod, Kidoodle, um, it's very obviously pitting itself against YouTube. But having said that, Kidoodle is a terrific complementary revenue provider as it's ad funded. And so the most watch gets the most revenue. And for a lot of producers, they're making good money out of Kidoodle. The networks, the global networks. So you have a short rundown. There are certain ones that don't exist in certain territories. So looking at their, their slipping, this is this aside is from a while ago. Um, it's interesting to take a look back in, in terms of it and see how fast things are progressing. Here's another one of my fabulous sheets with the lovely Carrie and Agustina. They do buy a lot. They invest a lot with um, with producers. So the US, I've just put the US in here because there aren't just the, the, the networks and the, and the S1s and the AVODs. Now, PBS is not the easiest of propositions as, a, as, an, as an international broadcast, uh, international producer. Possibly the world's greatest co-producing nation, incredible funding systems who are the equivalent of MDEC and very proactive in, in the marketplace, helping their producers and giving them the same kind of assistance as, as you guys get. Um, that's just to give you a little bit of insight on CBC Kids, what they have. You see a lot of um, a lot of similarities with them and shows that work on PBS in the States, Daniel Tiger, for example, for producers. Here we go. Well, that's Quebec. So with Europe, um, I'm going to have a little uh, chat about European funding um, because they have the most money, basically, and the best funding. Right, this is from 2018. So what's interesting about this slide is, um, if you can see, the initials at the bottom of the different countries. So, uh, top 10 channels, that was last year. You see Russia, I think this has a lot to do with population. Okay, France. This is very, very chunky on France. And I'm going to go through the different, um, uh, different players, production houses. This is the lady to approach, Claire Heinrich. The UK, very competitive marketplace, totally saturated. Now, CBBC is for the older kids, 6 to 16, much older kids, and CBBS is for the younger kids. So I'll let this you read this on your own, but because they have a great tax credit system, well, it's 25%, it's not the biggest in Europe or the world, um, and you have to spend at least 51% of your production in, in the UK. Someone was asking about the Kids Green Summit showreel. <laughs> so here it is. Um, those are links. Uh, Southern Ireland has a wonderful animation industry. I think uh, there's a huge group of, of guys and girls who are probably all at school together. They were definitely animation school together, all graduated together and all created uh, animation companies. So Germany, I'm sorry about that map. Of course, you know where Germany is on the map. It's uh, a very strong, very strong. They have a very, very strong regional broadcast system. They have 
fabulous funding. And there is Sebastian from Kiko Kinnikanau. He must have been there for 250 years. <laughs> it feels like it, at least 20 years. Um, just a quick one now. The, the, talking of regional channels that like were in Germany, La Forte in Spain, there were eight of them. Uh, they're not all listed there. They all have their own languages. And uh, separate. And then they invested less and less in animation, and now only TV3 Catalonia, which is Barcelona, of course, uh, only invests in animation. So you see the different numbers of, it's just stats like I had for France, you know, the number of productions, co-productions, which is pretty much everything. Italy, Italia. It's a tough market. It, they're very, very difficult to sell to if you have finished content. It took me one year to sell one show. And now on to fabulous Belgium. Belgium is extremely proactive for such a tiny country. It's like a gold mine, but also Belgium's is like a service providers or a minority co-production for your own property is a very interesting proposition. All right. And in a short note on Latin America, this is interesting because Discovery Kids covers the whole of Latin America, um, as do um, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network and Disney, the Disney channels. And my last slide, so I would say if you can possibly research as much as possible before you join me to reach out to people, understand the key players and the way the territories work and how to approach them. But nothing will help you more than working with a local partner because they know the ins and outs. It's all very well looking at tax credits and, and point systems and cultural criteria. Yeah, things have changed a lot, haven't they, um, in terms of the calendar year and planning ahead and it's being impossible to plan ahead now so basically why do you go to markets about building your network there's nothing better than meeting people face to face or on zoom attending conferences and sessions is a very good idea contacting people through their their online system uh, understand what buyers want and a better understanding of the international marketplace of course it all comes together when you're in the market researching your potential partners um, practice your pitch you'll have different opportunities for pitching uh, prepare your marketing materials well in advance if you can say it in front of a mirror in 20 seconds and your audience or whoever you're talking to gets it, if you talk to your family or your kids and they get it in 20 seconds or 10 seconds, then it works. Always send a confirmation email. So you need to be super in touch with whoever you're meeting. You need to be like, and you need to follow up with them. Make contact, be social, be proactive. Yes, keep networking, keep talking, keep curious, all of those good things. This is where you go and take your projects, get them financed. So this is where you can pitch. Animation Markets, there's a link to the Kids Screen Summit. And a see, I think those are the latest videos. This is very, I mean, very specific, but if you have animators or if you're animators or even scriptwriter and you're looking for a training course, then they have them in France at different schools uh, for people from all over the world. And then Tinny Kid, which is at the end of October, this month, so use a teaser for it. You won't know of the market. It's a, it's a festival for kids, which is very unusual. Children's Media Conference, I consider the best conference of the year. So you finish shows, sales markets, you've got the whole list there, licensing markets, publishing fairs, blah, 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 potential partners. This is just P's and Q's, basically politeness, etiquette, producer, always follow up, always consider advice, investor feedback, accept constructive criticism if you can, have an answer for everything, yeah? It's good, it's good to get, people always give you feedback whether you want it, you want it or not. So it's lovely to see you all, not to see you because I didn't see anybody, but it was lovely to know that you're there and I hope it was useful. Today I'm going to talk about um, marketing and uh, marketing being everything, um, integrating marketing thinking, uh, the reality checklist, putting everything together, uh, branding your property and then practicing all the practicalities. By integrated marketing thinking, um, I mean you thinking about the long game, um, how you're going to present yourself, your wish list of partners. Um, there's nothing wrong with thinking big and thinking very early about the DNA of your property, investors have to get it. You know, they have to understand within a matter of seconds the core concept of a project. Um, target age groups, your partners, research the right partners. That means studio partners, co-producers, distributors, and potentially key broadcasters or platforms. Um, in terms of markets and festivals, make sure you're picking the right ones for you. So read everything you can. So you need to convince investors, basically. Uh, to invest in your project and, and they won't do that if you don't inspire confidence and they don't think you can deliver. You really have to think about your return on investment. So you, you really have to love it and be invested in it. It has to be something that's very close to your heart. The reality checklist. So dream on, but think about the realities of the marketplace. The what, the who, the how, the why, the where and the when. Um, um, what is basically about identifying the DNA, but it's very, very, very key to knowing exactly what the core of your 
of your property is all about. So what have you got? What are the core values and what's in your checklist? Important to have these and fully understand and have fully understand by the creative team exactly, exactly how it's put together. Um, and if these key elements don't fit together, um, then you won't get beyond the development stage, basically. So how do you choose your partners? If you can choose them, yeah? so the answer to that is very carefully. Um, if you don't know partners or if you, you've approached different, different studios, then ask around in the business, people you know, if they've worked with them. Um, so, and also signing up key members of your team at an early stage can reassure potential investors. So you go your director. So think about the, di the, the background and experience of your director is super key. And also the think about the, the nothing ventured, nothing gays about, about voice talent or musical talent. So who's it for? Um, it's, this is going to seem super obvious to you, I'm sure. What makes the characters and stories relatable and to what age group? Um, watch and learn for inspiration. Uh, this is really, really important. How's it going to be made? <clears throat> and what's your animation technique, for example? Are you open to working with a partner studio who works with a similar technique? Um, is it a personal project? Is it viable? Is it attainable? Once again, objectivity versus subjectivity. So where are you prepared to go to make your connections? Uh, build your work, build your network, meet investors, studios. Getting a distributor on board is going to help a lot. But when you're talking to investors, it's very important to be able to say, this is what we have planned. Just like it's a good idea to have a budget in mind. In terms of uh, putting it all together, brainstorming, this is with your team in-house. Anyway, um, so uh, identifying, um, also research what sells, what works on air. Uh, mind mapping, uh, that's a, a technique that's used by a lot of companies when you're brainstorming. You know, it's a brilliant tool in putting keywords, actions, themes, storylines, etc. And it's very useful when we're working on brand building. A very long option on it, you know, not just a year, not just two years. You need to think about the long term, how long it's going to take you to develop this adaptation. Um, get online, think digital. We don't have any choice these days but to think digital. Think about trying to get meetings and make your dream cast and crew a reality. But it's interesting, there's an iqmatrix.com, you can see the website, there's, there's loads of them. This part is about you and your projects and how you're going to take them to market. What we're going to talk about is understanding your property, getting down to the nitty gritty, the core of your property, the DNA, back to basics. Um, what are the bare essentials? What's the show about? So I'm just going to go through uh, the concept. What's it about? Strengths and weaknesses, being realistic about what, what the shortcomings of your, your property might be. Title and tagline, the relationship between those two things. Capturing your concept in a nutshell, it really helps you pitch. Getting to the core, can you identify the strengths and weaknesses of your property? The title of your show, um, it doesn't have to have irony, but it helps if it does. And tell the tale, give an indication of what, what the show is about. So what is a tagline? It's basically your marketing copy for the movie poster. You know, it's, it captures the essential of your of your show or of your feature or whatever you've got. Logline is a couple of sentences or three sentences. Even. It's the essential dramatic, dramatic narrative in its most succinct form. Yes, it's the logline is the DNA of your script, concept, book, game, whatever it is. So the essential components of a logline, it's got to have a protagonist, their goal. You know, even if you've got like an ensemble cast, narrow it down a little bit. Um, the genre, the themes, um, without pigeonholing again, your property, is it a family comedy, action adventure, a horror spoof, or a combination of all of them? The world of the story um, has to be compelling, extremely compelling. So if you don't have designs, or you haven't got a real complete idea of concept, then uh, what a lot of uh, feature producers do is create a mood board. It's yes, it's early stages of development. So so why not think about photos and images? This is what people do a lot with cast and crew. It's one of their favourite actors. They, they imagine, oh, this is sorry, this is a little bit ugly. Uh, it's about plot structuring and uh, structuring episodes, you know, and uh, putting it into basic acts one, act two, and three. You don't need me to tell you this, but writing is absolutely essential. Yeah? And competition is super tough and standards are very high um, in terms of animation for all ages. Okay, the characters. So why choose these particular people, animals, aliens, whatever you've got as characters? What embodies these characters? What can you imagine them saying? Can you think of a catchphrase for each of your main characters? And have these questions, ask yourself these questions. What do they want? Preparing to pitch your development. So key project components, what you need to put together and think about when you're putting together development. So your studio and creative design, writing and music. So what's the project about? Who are the characters? These are things you have to think about when putting your Bible together. What is the unique selling point? What's, what's special about your show? What makes it stand out from other shows? So putting your Bible together. 
um, structuring your pitch bible. This is for the press, really. I mean, if you're looking, you don't forget your key visual. You'll need it in landscape format and in portrait format. And then with your toolkit, of course, this includes your verbal pitch, the written project pitch, EPK. This is really for features and the electronic press kit. Um, so your pitch bible and all the components we were talking about earlier. Uh, the script is essential for a feature. Um, you can use it as well for your EPK if you're doing it for a series. Key visuals, understanding investors. Uh, this is really important. This is not just understanding the investors and the, the, the companies. This is actually them as people and reading them, understanding the person who you've got in front of you. Investors want to know immediately. If they don't know you, they're going to want to know these things. So these actually come from five top tips. So I did a huge amount of research at the beginning of the year when I was preparing a workshop for, for Sheffield. So some of you might know Ryan Ross. This is his pitch checklist that we did for the for the workshop. These are more pitching tips from Jellyfish, which is a UK, UK producer. Um, uh, they have a lot of experience in live action features and animation. That's from Jellyfish. This is from Nickelodeon. And then for licensing, this is from a licensing expert who's worked in a number of huge companies. Uh, I mean, these are all real life situations, uh, which of course we don't have these days, but you have to be prepared to pitch in any kind of circumstance. Your company, you're going to have to pitch yourselves, your company, if you haven't been out on the front line before, think about how you want to portray yourself. So can you pitch your property in a nutshell? Can you keep it very tight? When you're, when you're doing your pitch, write it, rehearse it, practice it, practice it in front of the mirror, practice it with other people. So now you've done all the groundwork and the actual pitch itself, whatever it is, however long it is, um, have you covered the basics? Concept, character design, world of story, write it out, see how long it takes you to do. It's all about practice, yeah? Be prepared, don't try and wing it. It's about doing your homework, really, and about, it's about demonstrating what you've done in the past, yeah? So what, don't, 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 don't describe it, show it. So overselling is hitting your target points, concept, character, story, that's it. Anything more than that, you're likely to be overselling your idea and boring your audience. Make it joyful and people happy to be happy to hear from you. You're not, you're not a pest, you're not a pain, you're, you, you're passionate about your project, you're enthusiastic. And for me as an independent, that's all I have. Know also the, the limitations. If you can get, um, if you, if you do start making deals and, um, then, then try and find, a legal affairs or ask other producers and there are a lot of white papers you can read like market reports lots of kids insights statistics you can find on the different websites i think that is almost it now it's going to be time for you to pitch thank you for staying till the very end it was an absolute pleasure <laughs> and thanks for your questions